Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so for today's quick tip, we're going to take a look at dynamic depth of field. Uh, so to keep this short, I'm going to start uh, with a render setup like I have here. Um, this will be included in the project file, so I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, but as you can see, it's very simple. We have a quick SOP network a geo, um, I have a super simple PBR material, an environment light with an environment map, uh, I got a camera, I have a regular light uh, just for some highlights, and then I just have a render, an anti-alias, a transform, and an out. So nothing too crazy going on here. And these chops are just controlling my twist, just to give it a little bit of interest. Um, but I'm not going to really talk about that, because the point of what we're doing here is depth of field. So depth of field is something that people have probably seen. Do a render, take a render, grab a depth top, drop your render onto said depth top. Uh, change the depth texture to 8-bit fixed, rearrange from camera space, and then go nuts to figure out what the appropriate range is using just kind of trial and error, right? Where is near, where is far, something like maybe this. Um, and then we use a Luma Blur to fake this depth of field. And with a much higher filter width, maybe not quite that high, a much higher filter width, we can really see how our depth of field changes as we mess with these parameters. So I like something kind of like this. Split this to make it a bit easier. Um, all right, so yeah, I like the depth of field to be kind of just where, just the very front is sharp, and the rest has some pretty decent uh, blurring. And then you can use gamma to control the fall off. Now, that is all well and good, but let's say we wanted to move our camera around or zoom our camera in or zoom our camera out. You can see that our depth of field is getting all messed up because the actual depth is a function of where our camera is in 3D space. Um, and so, we have to do a little bit of work to make this dynamic, um, which is super, super helpful. If you're doing anything like camera animations um, or just generally don't want to have to be messing around with your depth top all the time as you are going through developing your scene. So what I will do is drop a null, uh, whoops, a null component. I will call this, um, well, actually, I don't even really need an all. I can just use this geometry. So I'll use that geometry. I will grab an object top. Now the object top will let you put in two different objects um, and then do some calculations with them, which is pretty much exactly what we need because what we need is a procedural way to figure out how far away our camera is from our geometry, and then use that distance to rearrange our depth. So I will first look at the docs. We can see that the object chop compares two objects and output channels for their raw or relative positions. That's exactly what we need. Specifically, the distance between the origin of two objects. So 
So the target object, the object that is being compared to the position of the reference object. And then our reference object is the object that acts as the origin of the comparison. Okay, so we want our distance to be positive. So I believe we want our camera to be the reference. We want our geo to be the target. And we're gonna change our output to measurements and then just get the distance. Now, if this is right, then as I'm zooming, whoa, as I'm zooming, we can see that our distance here is changing. And so we're basically gonna just use this distance to run our depth top. So I will collapse all of that. Oops, I want to customize my component and I want to do a couple things. We'll give it an output res for good practice. Nineteen twenty by ten eighty, uh, and then we will say depth near adjust, which can be a float, and depth far adjust, which can be a float, and then we can have depth fall off, which can also be a float. Um, so then, what can we do? we can have our depth fall off default to one and have a range max of two, I think. We probably don't really want it to be more than two and actually gonna leave it at one. So that'll really just let us increase the fall off. Um, our depth near adjust will default to zero and fire adjust, we can also default to zero for now. I'll name this uh, chop cam to geo. And then I'm going to drop this into both of my to and from. Then here, I'm going to say minus depth parent dot par dot depth near adjust dot eval um, adj we can default this to a one perhaps and then give it up to like three on the range and then we can actually, I'll just copy this parameter plus parent dot par dot ah. Copy all of this plus parent dot par dot depth far adjust. At least make them consistent. Um, the depth far adjust dot eval and we'll default that to one as well. And so now we can see that with that spread, we have our front of the image not being blurred at all. We have the back of our image being blurred, just a kiss. And if we move our camera around, that's still the case. If we move our camera real close, that's still the case. And that is Pretty nice. To do any final tweaks, we can then use our uh, here. So what I can do is make my uh, oh, it's fine. I'm not going to do that. But to do some fine tuning, you can then just change the depth near adjust or the depth far adjust and that will kind of bring things into focus as well as use the fall off to fine tune things even more. So now you have a, oh, that's why our 
fall off wasn't working. And now our fall off also impacts our image. So now we have a really nice dynamic depth of field effect. And that's it. So that is it for today. Uh, thank you to all of my Patreons for keeping the support coming and letting me do all this stuff. It's incredible. It really means so much to me. Thank you guys profusely. And until next time.